in this video <coughs> we will learn some mathematical concepts that are applied in different fields like economics business and other fields so these methods that we are going to learn the mathematical methods are basically application based so to begin with we will first start with some preliminary terms and concepts which will help us in understanding these applications of mathematics so let's begin with very basic definition of what is a function so to define function it is a simple rule which assigns a number in r1 to each number in r basically function will assign a particular numerical value to each function in real number set for example if my function is fx is equal to x plus 1 then each value of x will give a different value to fx this is a function so if i will put x is equal to 2 in my function then fx will become 3 and this is how i can give any value to x and can receive a different value for fx now there are two types of variables in a function the input variable and output variable in my example here x is input variable and fx is output so i will put in the value of x and get an output that is value of fx so x is input and fx is output the properties for these variable is that the input variable x is called independent variable or in economic application it is called the exogenous variable independent variable because it is not dependent on any other value and the output variable that is fx or y is dependent variable because it depends on value of x so here fx is dependent on what value i'll give to x so fx or which is also denoted as y is dependent on value of x and x is independent now let's look at some forms of function okay and begin with a very basic one the polynomials or uh, the basic one is mono monomials monomials functions of the form ax to the power k are called monomials the very basic form of this term is this ax to the power k now k is called the degree of monomial and number a is coefficient so if i'll add different monomials i will get what is called a polynomial this is a polynomial and these are monomials so i can add different monomials to get polynomials these are some basic forms of functions that we face so function in itself is an very important concept in application of mathematics because these are applied everywhere in economics we have utility function cost function so these theories or these concepts are very important in mathematical methods now let us see some different types of functions see polynomial and monomial are forms of function and then there are types of function okay so there are rational functions as we know rational numbers are some numbers in p by q forms rational numbers are something like p divided by q this is a rational number similarly on this idea we have rational functions rational functions one function divided by other function so this is this form a function by function a function upon a function is rational function similarly we have this form called exponential function exponential function can be written like this basically any number any number with some power is an exponential function and if we have these terms sin and cos we these are called trigonometric functions so these are types of functions another form is logarithmic functions which are usually used in some many uh, concepts and applications so these are types of functions now let's look, look at some properties of functions a function can be increasing or decreasing dependent on how it is plotted or how it behaves so a function is increasing 
if it graphs moves upward from left to right just like a supply curve okay if it's upward moving upward sloping curve or upward sloping function then it is increasing function it is increasing the value is increasing similarly a decreasing function is something if its graph move downward from left to right like a demand function okay so these are mathematical ways of representing increasing decreasing function so if there are some values of x1 and x2 and for that values for those values fx1 is more than fx2 then it is an increasing function similarly if x fx1 is less than fx2 it is decreasing function these are some graphs of these functions so the first one is x plus 1 and undoubtedly it is an increasing function similarly the second graph is 2x basically this is 2x so uh, if i have any value of x 1 2 3 the y value or the uh, function will be twice of this so if x, x is 1 then fx is 2 x is 2 then fx is 2 into 2 4 and if x is 3 then i will get double of 3 that is 6 this is an increasing function so similarly we have some decreasing functions also and some increasing function if i have something like minus x to the power 7 so it is a decreasing function because the value each time i'll get as uh, the value of x will increase i'll get some lower number so it is decreasing function now functions like these increasing or decreasing functions or any function any curve of function can have some uh, points which are uh, maximum or minimum of that function so for a function for a function minimum is that point from where it changes from decreasing to increasing okay the, fr the change from where the change take the, that critical point is a minimum of the function at that point so if this uh, as you can see in this curve if at x naught I am getting that point from where the function is changing from decreasing to increasing then x naught at x naught I have the minimum similarly maximum point is from where a function changes from increasing to decreasing that is a maximum what is a domain in function as we have done we have this x as input or independent variable okay so set of x is domain what is the set set is basically a collection of element represented by these curly bracket so if x have different values 1 3 4 8 anything so collection of value of x is a set and that set is called domain of the function so basically if like you are required to find domain of a function all you need to do is find all the values of x that that function can take for example in the function f x is equal to 1 by x in this function x can take any value in real number so domain is real number but x cannot be 0 so all real numbers except 0 is domain why x cannot be 0 because if i'll take something upon 0 it is not defined so at that point at 1 at x is equal to 0 1 by x is not defined so it is not a part of domain 0 is not part of domain of the function those value at which those value, values of x at which the function is defined is domain now let's see the interval notations basically it is a different concept basically they, in this we just write a function or uh, values of a function in a form which tells me that the particular x value lies between these two ranges or these two limits for an in, uh, open interval open interval i have this notation with these round brackets this tells me that x uh, will lies between suppose these two values a and b x lies between a and b so an open interval will not include a and b x lies between a and b but it is not equal to either a or b it is open interval similarly for closed interval we have this form square brackets 
and in this we include the limits we include a and b so this is close interval similarly we have half open half close intervals where one is a round bracket and other is square bracket the closed interval includes those limits and open interval does not include those limit between which the values of x will lie 